Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 150 plus tips, tricks, and features, as well as a few hidden features for your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. So we are gonna start off with some basic and common features, and then I'm gonna show you guys every single thing you can do with the S Pen for the Z Fold 3, and then we're gonna slowly expand into battery-related features and a couple other cool and powerful things you need to set up on your device. So let's dive in and get started. Let's maximize the ownership of your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Let's dive in. All right, so I'm sure a lot of you guys know that you can set a video wallpaper to play on your lock screen. As you can see, that looks gorgeous. But there's one more thing you can do that is absolutely amazing. So let's say you have any video file, a video of your kids, your pets, your car, of nature, whatever. Go to that folder, go to the gallery and grab the video that you want to set as your lock screen wallpaper. Here's a custom video here. I'm gonna tap this button right over here and I'm actually able to set this video as a wallpaper. Now some videos are too long, some videos are short. If a video is too long, look what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna tap on lock screen, all right? And it says the video is too long and too big. Tap the edit button, so I'm gonna tap the edit button and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it down to 15 seconds. That's the maximum you're allowed in the lock screen. So I'm gonna grab the area that I want. That's 19 seconds. Let's go to make it a little bit less. Now we're around 14 seconds. I'm gonna click on done. All right, it says trimming video. And once that is complete, the video file is saved. And now I can set this on the lock screen. And now I can have the ultimate customization, my very own video on the lock screen. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Press and hold to do a full uh, playthrough, okay? So if you press and hold, it just plays through the whole thing. So that's absolutely fantastic, all right guys? So one of the very first things you wanna do with your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold is to customize the power button on the side. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to your settings, okay, and then you wanna scroll down a little bit, go to advanced features, and go to side key. The side key is the power button slash fingerprint sensor on the side over here. So basically what you can do is you can program the power button so when you double click it real quick, it's gonna launch the camera as you can see. Now this is gonna work when the screen is open like this or when it is closed, it is still gonna launch the camera. It's just gonna pop up on the smaller screen on the outside. Also with the double press, you can open Bixby but here's what I like to do. I like to go to open app, and what I like to do is I like to grab the flashlight, okay? So even when the phone is turned off, just like this, when I double press the power button, it is going to open the flashlight, okay? So that's gonna be very useful when you're coming home at night, it's dark, you need a quick light. So that's the option I like to use, but again, you can pick any application to launch when you click that power button and like I said, works on the inner display and the outer display. Now, when you press and hold, what you can do is you can wake Bixby or simply bring down the power off menu. So now when I press and hold, it simply gives me the power off menu. That's it. Now, now I like to keep it here. And the reason is because when you pull this down, the power off menu comes up anyway. When you pull this down one more time, it is right here. Okay. So again, your choice. Now the next cool thing I really like is when you go to the clock application, all right, let's go to the clock application right over here. If I go to my timer, and let's say I set up a timer for whatever, workout, studying, or whatever, uh, if I tap on start, I, don't, I no longer have to stay in the timer application. When I press home, what I get is a little drop down that continues running on the side so I can do other things while that counter is still running. And if you don't touch it, it turns into this tiny little icon and you can see it is actually filling up as the time goes by, okay? So anytime you click it, you can tap on this button to maximize it, it's all up to you. All right, so the next important thing that you wanna do, is you wanna go into your settings, all right? And then you want to go all the way down and go into about phone and you want to make sure that you customize the name of your smartphone by clicking edit right here 
So once you do that, you are able to give your phone a unique name and make it truly yours. So in my case, it's now known as Saki Fold 3. And also when I share this phone on Bluetooth networks, Wi-Fi networks, or with my friends, this is the name they're gonna be able to see and easily identify the phone. So that's the first step to name your phone and make it yours. The second thing that you wanna set up is you wanna enable double tap to sleep and double tap to wake. So when I double tap on the screen, it puts the phone to sleep. If I double tap, it wakes up the phone. So make sure this feature is enabled. It's gonna be a lifesaver. It just makes things easy. And what you wanna to do to enable this is you wanna go into your settings and then you wanna go into your advanced features and then you wanna go over to motions and gestures and make sure double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen is in fact enabled. For example, if I have this disabled, I can't double tap to turn off the phone. All right, so make sure that's enabled. Let's move on. Now the next feature I'm gonna talk about has to do with your wallpaper. Now this is very important because when you pinch the screen and when you go into wallpapers, and let's say you go to my wallpapers and you pick a brand new wallpaper. So let's tap on this one and say lock and home screens. What's gonna happen is when you change the wallpaper while you are in the inner display, that wallpaper only applies to the inner display. So you can have a separate wallpaper for the cover screen. So here we have the outer display and if I pinch the screen and if I tap on wallpapers, again, if I go into my wallpapers and if I change the wallpaper here, it's gonna be a separate wallpaper, okay? So right now I have two different wallpapers on the inside and outside, great customization. Now one more thing you wanna quickly enable, if you pinch the screen and if you go to the settings, uh, on the top we have something known as the cover screen mirroring. So if you want two separate experiences on two separate displays, uh, the inner display and the outer display, you wanna have this off. Because if you do off, you can have two different home screen setups. So this home screen is gonna have a different layout than the outer home screen, including different wallpapers, as I showed you earlier. But if you turn it on, everything over here is gonna be mirrored to the cover screen display. So if you don't want that, make sure uh, you pinch the screen, go to settings, and turn this off. If you want total uniformity, boom, you're, you're on, you're good to go. Now one thing that's important, if you go to your settings, all right, and if you go into your display, what you can do is you can tap on this thing right here, screen, layout, and zoom. And by default, it's multi-view, which is the split screen view, half and half. Standard view is gonna expand everything. I don't like this, okay? So even if I go to messages now, it's gonna be fully expanded. I like it better on the large screen to have the multi-view. This only applies to the inner display. The outer display is always a single line. With this one, you have the multi-display stuff, as you can see. Fantastic. Another important little feature, if I go to my settings over here, now this phone comes uh, with 120 hertz display refresh rate. And it's on both screens, so you get super smooth scrolling on both. So if I go to display, and if I go to motion smoothness, I can either have adaptive 120 or standard 60 hertz. This will save me some battery life. If you wanna extend your battery life, you can choose this option. If you want smooth scrolling and animations, you wanna pick this one, and I'll let you know, when you go to standard and you click apply, it actually makes the, it, the modification to both screens, okay? So this is gonna control both the cover display and the inner display. I recommend just sticking to the motion smoothness adaptive for maximum smooth scrolling. The next thing that's very important is gonna be these buttons at the bottom. So by default, these might be on this side or this side for the inner display. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to your settings, all right, and then you wanna go to your display. And there's a couple options here at the bottom. When you go to navigation bar, uh, you can have the button position on the left, as you can see. You can have it on the right. This is the default when you first set up the phone. Or you can have it at center. That's the way I like it. Now, let's say you don't want the buttons at all. You want full immersion. You can go to the swipe gestures. So the buttons will disappear, and you are going to be able to use these motion gestures, uh, these swipe gestures to bring up stuff 
and stuff like that. So I prefer to have buttons, but you have the option to go from swipe to buttons. It's all gonna be up to you. When you do go to swipe gestures, you do have additional options to customize what's happening here. For example, look at this line here at the bottom, okay? Let's say you don't want that line. You can disable that line and it's gonna disappear. So now you have a true full screen experience. So that's great, but like I said, I'm gonna keep to, I'm gonna stick to buttons. That's the way I like it. And when you do make a modifications on this screen, it applies to both screens. The next thing that's also very important that you wanna quickly set up is, let's go to my messages over here. Uh, let's just say I'm gonna tap a new message. So you can see that we have a keyboard that pops up in a split screen design, all righty? Now, some people don't like that. So what you can do is you have a couple options. On the top, you are gonna see a mini keyboard icon. So you can actually tap on this and combine it and make it a full screen keyboard. You can tap it again, make it split, or you can tap this guy and turn it into a little floating uh, keyboard that you can move around as you can see. You can have it anywhere that you want. All right, it's a large display. You have a lot of real estate. You do what you want. So I like it this way. And also if you don't see these options here, you can tap on settings, scroll down, go into mode, all righty, and just want to let you know, you can have separate keyboards for separate screens. So right now, main screen has a standard keyboard. The cover screen in portrait or landscape has a standard keyboard and a split. I'm just going to keep it standard everywhere. That's the way I like it. All righty. So I'm going to go back over here. Now we have a standard keyboard. That's the standard. That's the split. And that's the floating. All right. Just so you know. Let's move on. Now, next up, I'm gonna describe a feature that is very unique to the Fold 3. Even the Fold 2 and the Fold 1 doesn't have it yet. And it's gonna be a little involved. So it has to do with the edge screen. So you might see this enabled on your phone by default. When you pull it in, you are gonna see a bunch of applications right here. Now, these are basically quick access applications. You can edit these. So first, I want you guys to go to your settings, all right? Go to display. And here's the main setting, the edge panels. That thing is known as the edge panel right here, okay? If I turn this off, it disappears. If I click it, it shows up. So if I go into my panels, I can have multiple panels added. For now, I'm gonna stick to single panel because this panel itself has a special feature that I wanna talk about. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna tap on edit, all right? and make sure, remove the applications, and then add applications that you want to actually use, all right? So that's quick shortcut, so I can add as many as I want. Let me just give you some examples here. So you can see I can add as many as I want. So once I do that, once you have all the apps that you want, when you pull this in, now you have access to all your quick apps that you wanna access right away. There is a button here you can tap, and that button is gonna give you a very special option known as the pin option. But you're not gonna see this here by default. You have to enable it. When you tap on pin, I'm gonna show you how to enable it by the way. When you tap on pin, it is going to dock the apps right here and you can scroll through them. This will always be here, almost like a computer dock, like a Mac or a Windows, and you can scroll through all the applications. And you can also remove it at will by tapping the pin button, all right? So now it's unpinned. So how do you enable this pin icon? What you have to do is you have to go to your settings, you have to go to advanced features, and then you have to go into the labs feature. Once you're at the labs feature, at the bottom, you are gonna say pin your favorite apps, you're gonna enable this. If you disable this, you're not gonna see the pin option, which is the default. If you enable it, you are gonna see the pin option and you are able to pin that thing, the dock on the side with, with all the applications you want over here. Very nice little tactic, okay? So for now, I'm gonna unpin it, but that's an option that's unique to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 at least for now. You can also click on this, go inside to see more details, all righty? But remember, the big thing is go to the settings, go to display, go into edge panels, and when you are in your panels, make sure you tap on edit 
to customize the apps you want to see on the panel for quick access. And then if you want extra apps, that's fine. You can have additional applications as you can see. So now when I go like this, I can swipe over. I also have a tools application. So you can customize the edge panels uh, any way that you want. Now when you have multiple edge panels, let, now I have multiple edge panels. So what's going to happen if I pin this guy? Let me show it to you. So let's pin this guy to the side. Now it's pinned my quick apps, but if I want to access my other edge panels, I click this button here and that's going to bring all my other edge panels. But if I go back, this dock comes right back. Very well implemented. And while we are on the topic of the edge panels, this thing here is known as the edge handle. You can customize this as well. First and foremost, you can grab this and you can put it anywhere you want on the screen or even on the other side. But to make further modifications, you go to display, you go into the edge panels, and what you do is you go to handle, it's known as the edge handle, you can change the color, as you can see, okay? So I can make it less transparent, highly transparent, and I can make it large and small, as you can see. I can change the position to right, boom, right over there, boom, right over here, okay? Just so you know, for maximum customization. The next thing I want to talk about, now because we have a large screen, I'm assuming a lot of people are, are going to be doing a lot of reading on this uh, display. Kindle, articles, newspapers. So you want to make sure you get minimum eye strain. So go to display and then make sure you enable the eye comfort shield, which is going to make sure the screen gets a little bit warmer so it puts less strain on your eyes. Fantastic, all right? I would just keep this, this adaptive, but you can go to custom and make a little bit modification. So normally I would not worry about this eye comfort shield, but with this one, probably a lot of people are gonna be doing a lot of reading. You don't wanna cause eye strain, so make sure you enable eye comfort shield. The next thing I wanna talk about is very important. It has to do with your media, multimedia experience. So watching movies and also sound quality. So two things you want to do. First, you go to your settings, then you go into your sounds and vibration, then you go down over here, you go to sound quality and effects. Once you're here, you want to enable Dolby Atmos, all right? This phone has high quality stereo speakers and Dolby sound. So to get the best sound, you want to enable this and you can pick auto or if you know you're going to watch a movie, you can just pick it manually. All right, but that's fine. That's number one thing you want to enable. Number two, you go to display. I'm sorry, you go to advanced features right here. Then you go down a little bit. And here's something that's very important, again, for watching video. Video brightness. You tap on this one, you choose bright. That's going to make your videos simply more vivid and more bright with the colors popping at you and you can enable it for every single application that you download, any app that plays videos like YouTube, Netflix, Crunchyroll, Hulu, HBO Max, whatever. So you can disable, enable for whatever you want. So you'll notice when you have this enabled and you're watching a movie, the screen is just gonna get more brighter and more vivid. It's gonna make your watching experience better. So make sure sound and video is optimized for the best pleasure. Now one more thing I want to talk about in relation to the home screen, when you are when you have a lot of stuff on the home screen, you want to rearrange stuff, here's what I like to do. I like to press and hold on apps and then I tap on select and I want to let you know you can select a bunch of apps at the same time then press and hold and move them around as a batch in the same home screen or press and hold select, let's select all of them or you can move them to a separate screen on the side. This is a very easy way to clean up your home screen. Additionally, if I have, let's just grab a couple of these apps, one, two, three, four. I can quickly create a folder out of a batch of applications and give it a name. Okay, let's just say X for now. And also I can tap this button here, change the color of the folder to anything that I want uh, to further customize it. Let's pick red just as an option. All right, so that's the X folder. And again, look at this. 
select, boom, boom, boom. I can grab all these guys, remove it, and the folder disappears, all right? So let me put this back here. So that's great. Very easy to do batch operations, rearrange the home screen like this. Fantastic. Now let's talk about some home screen customization. So first thing that I want you guys to enable is when you pull down on the screen, you want to bring down the notifications panel. Instead of having to go all the way up to pull it down, you can do it anywhere on the screen. So you want to pinch the screen, you want to go into the home screen settings, and you want to enable this option right here, swipe down for notification panel. If I did not have this enabled, it goes to the app drawer, which is not necessary because, let me just uh, go back here, let me go back to the settings, uh, because when I have this enabled, I can still go up to go to app drawer, and then you want to pull down to bring notifications panel. Do it twice, and the whole thing is going to come down. That's number one. Number two, again, pinch the screen, tap on settings, screen button on home screen. If I enable this, I have a convenient button right here that I can tap that's going to take to my app drawer. All right, though, so that's one more thing. Now let's quickly talk about the lock screen and do some customizations. Now anytime you make a modification to the lock screen, it's going to apply to both screens except for the wallpaper. So if I go to my settings, this is what I like to do right away. I like to go to my display and I like to go into my, actually no, I'm sorry, I want to go to my lock screen and the first thing I do is I tap on contact information and actually put a little signature on my phone. So you can use this to put your contact information. If your phone gets stolen, somebody can see the display and contact you. Nobody really does that. People usually just steal the phone. So what I like to do is when I go to my lock screen, I like to have a little personalized signature. Though it says Saki Tech, you can have a quote, you can have your name, you can have whatever that you want, a nice text field. The other thing I like to do under lock screen, very important, I like to go into my shortcuts over here and I like to pick two shortcuts. So if I again tap, you can see we have a shortcut here, phone and the camera. So what I do is I go back into that area, I tap on left shortcut and I do calculator in this case and then right shortcut, I'll just do the camera which is already there. Now when I make this modification, it applies to both screens, inside, outside. So look at this. I got the calculator and the camera. I can tap and swipe to activate the calculator from the lock screen. So that's another thing I want to do. And then another very important thing is the widgets. So tap on this guy. I can have a bunch of widgets on my lock screen. Let's enable a couple. Let's uh, disable this. Let's have today's schedule. Okay, so four of these guys, okay? Now, look at this. Double tap, boom, boom, all right? Tap on the clock it's going to expand and give me four widgets that I just set up. I can even tap on settings to go back and modify them. I can even uh, only have two, all right? So I can have my music control and my weather. That's absolutely fantastic. Again, when you make a modification here, it also applies to the outer display. Another big thing, back in the settings, under lock screen, you can always pick a clock style. So when you click on the clock style, you want to go to the lock screen, all right? And from here, you can pick a unique clock for your lock screen and even change the colors as you can see, all right? Pick any color that you want from here, uh, but we're going to, let's just stick with blue, click done, boom, boom, look at this. We got a nice clock on the, on the outside. So now the lock screen is customized to my taste. There's a couple of things you can do in here as well. Going back to lock screen, the always on display is something on top of the lock screen. So when I have the phone disabled, I mean turned off, if I tap once, it shows me the always on display. But that's the always on display. Right from here, I have the tap to show for 10 seconds enabled. I recommend not doing show always. If you do this, every time you turn off your phone, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna actually waste your battery, all right? So keep, if you want it, you just keep tap to show. If you don't want it, disable it, okay? Some people just don't want it. And that's it for the lock screen. Now one more thing, when you go to your messages, you can see right over here what I have is I have a customized background for that particular conversation with Saki 2. So you can change the background if you so desire for further customization. Uh, when you are in a uh, option here, tap on settings, 
go into customized chat room and from here you can pick any color that you want you can pick a photo from your gallery and you can change the contrast of the text you can make it white you can make it black it's up to you all right so you can apply this to all chat rooms okay you pick a color you can apply it to all chat rooms or you can do custom so so your girlfriend can have a different color or a photo in the background your father can have a different color your brother sister whatever you can modify it for every single person but like i said if you go here if you tap on apply to all chat rooms it's going to apply to everybody but if you just want to keep it custom to each person don't click apply all and you're going to be good to go now one more important thing if you go to your settings all right and if you go into your display over here we have an option known as continue apps on cover screen if you click on this you can pick apps one by one so let's do the calculator all right so i have it right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to launch the calculator application so let's launch it now when i close the display this app is going to transfer over to the cover display automatically all right so that's what that option is for so look at that so i'm gonna i'm gonna bend this over and it's coming right here it just transferred over it did flip i didn't have i didn't want that but you can fix that no problem so that's one thing you continue apps on the cover display from the inner display and like i said you can enable this for every application that you want that option to apply to it does not work by default you have to actually do it uh, right from here now one thing i'm going to show you guys in relation to the phone application if i tap on the phone application if i tap on the settings and if i go to settings what you can do is over here we have answering and ending calls when you click this guy what you can do is you can use hardware buttons to take calls and end calls so if i enable these guys look it says you can press volume up key to answer a call and you can press the power key the side button to end a call this works both when it's open like this or when it's closed which is what it's better at so you can use hardware keys to take uh, calls and to end calls instead of swiping on the screen i like that option now some phones may not have this next option but if you go to your settings and if you go all the way down to device care at the bottom we have an option that says device protection is turned off you want to enable this if you turn this on what's going to happen is you are going to have antivirus enabled on your phone which means your phone is going to be scanned when you want it or automatically to make sure you don't have any malware spyware or any weird apps on your phone so not every phone may show this some carriers disable this uh, but most versions should have device protection under battery and device care now while we are here you go to battery you have a bunch of options you got the power savings mode if you want to save your battery you enable this let's say you're running low on the battery boom you're going to start saving battery okay so that's the power savings mode that can be further customized by using these options so go back over here under more battery settings you also want to make sure uh, you have all these options enabled fast charging fast wireless charging can be disabled just make sure it is enabled and you can also enable this enhanced processing if you want to go nuts you want maximum performance enable enhanced processing once you enable this guy you can also uh, toggle it on and off from the quick toggles on the top so it should be somewhere in here right here so you click it you put it right there now it's active you can turn this on and off for maximum performance even get a little icon on the top that shows enhanced processing all right now let's move on and talk about every single s pen feature every function every tip every trick every feature for the samsung galaxy z fold 3 so i want you guys to master your smartphone and your s pen i'm also going to drop a link to purchase the s pen down below if you don't have one yet and you want to buy it after you watch this video this is the s pen and i'll let you know s pen has three dimensions of functionality we're going to go over each one of them the video is going to be broken down into three parts so the first thing we're going to do is if i go to my settings right over here okay and if i go into my advanced features 
you are going to see that we have a whole bunch of S Pen settings right here. That's the first dimension. We're going to go over everything top to bottom. Number two, we have the Air Actions. So I'm going to click on this guy. Now I will let you know Air Actions is only available if you buy the S Pen Pro, which I have right here. I'm going to drop a link to this below. If you don't want the Air Actions, you can get the regular S Pen Z Fold Edition. The only difference is this one has the Air Actions, this menu here, that's a second dimension, and the regular Z Fold uh, pen right here does not have access to Air Actions because Air Actions require Bluetooth connection and the S Pen Pro has that Bluetooth connection. So just so you know, it is not an essential function. It's going to be up to you to make that decision if you need this or not. So that's going to be the second thing we're going to go over. And in the final phase of the video, we are going to go over the Air Command menu. So if I click the button on the screen, anywhere in the, in the phone, if I click the button, it brings up the Air Command menu right here. Okay. And this Air Command menu is fully customizable and has lots of functions. I'm going to teach you everything. So let's dive in and get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to actually go to my settings, go into my advanced features, and start with my regular S Pen functions. Now Air Actions, we're going to come back to it later. Let's start off with the screen off memo. So when the screen off memo is in fact enabled, what you can do is when your screen is turned off, you can press the button here, the pen button, double tap on the screen, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up a quick note. So even if your phone is locked, you can take some notes on the go. It's great for note taking, like I said, on the go, on the fly, okay? And then you click save and it gets saved. You can go into your phone and you can access that note through Samsung Notes application. So that's the screen off memo, okay? You can disable it or you can enable it. Now, one thing I'm going to let you know with the screen off memo is if I do go here, if I press the button, double tap, it's going to activate that. I do have the option to pick a different color. So that kind of looks cool if you want to use uh, a different color to take your notes. Also functionally useful. So I'm going to save that. And again, if I want to access those notes, I go to my Samsung notes. It's going to show up right here. As you can see, you can edit that even further. So that's number one. Number two, back at the settings, advanced features, S Pen, we have the quick create notes. So this one works without you having to lock the screen. So let's say you're doing anything on your screen. You're on a website doing some research and you want to quickly jot down a note. All you do is you press and hold this button again and double tap on the screen it's going to bring up a quick memo, but this time your phone is unlocked already. So that's great feature again, and you can start writing. You can pick the pens that you want from here, pencil, pen, change the size, whatever. You got your highlighter, if that's what you need. You got your colors, you got everything, okay? And again, once you're done with this note here, you can simply tap on the top here and just exit out. It's going to be saved automatically. So that's number two. Number three, what we have is we have this wonderful feature known as S Pen to text. I'm gonna enable it. When you go inside, it tells you what it can do. So you can basically write anywhere on the screen where there is availability. So for example, let me just go outside. Okay, also enable this feature, show writing toolbar, I'll show you what that is. So if I go to my Internet Explorer here, I mean my Chrome web browser, Anywhere you can actually use the keyboard to type, you can start writing with the S Pen. So look at this. I can start writing www.whatever.com. That is fantastic. And here's that little toolbar we were talking about. So this toolbar allows you to put spaces, X things out, or just bring up the keyboard if that's what you want. And that's going to be a floating keyboard. So that's just an easy way to start writing wherever there is a writing field. It also works for text messages. Just start writing and it's going to convert that. Let me show it to you. Let's just say Google. And I'm writing like crap over here. You can see it's still very accurate to translate. So it's a great little option that you can use. No problem. Now let's go back. Now we have the air view. This is actually one of my favorite features. Let me show you what it does. So you enable this and then you can hover the S Pen over the things that you're interacting with 
and it's going to give you a little bit of a preview. So we can do calendars, events, uh, pictures in the gallery. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me go to my gallery. So here's my gallery. Without touching the screen, I can simply hover over photos and it's going to give me a preview of that photo. I'm not touching the screen and I can even delete the photo from here and I can even get little uh, tips as to what I am pointing at. So that's the delete and that is the share button and all this without me even touching the screen. So let's do the video for example. When I do the video, it's going to actually play the video as it previews it. All this is happening with the S Pen. So this also works in calendar. So let me just bring up my calendar here. So right there. So if I were to actually hover over here, I'm going to get an opening and it's going to give me a quick preview. Okay. Look at this right here. Veterans Day, credit card due, all these things are popping up. You can quickly preview things as you please. So that's that. Let's go back to the settings. Let's... Now this one here is the show pointer when hovering. Now as you hover your phone over your screen, you're going to see a little pointer right next to the tip of the actual pen. Before you touch the screen, you're going to see that pointer just hovering over the screen. You can disable that if it's distracting, okay? So I'm going to keep it disabled for this video. No more pointers when I point the, uh, the S Pen onto the screen. Now let's move on to the air command. Now this portion here has to do with the air command that I'm going to talk about in a second. But because I'm going to talk about that separately, I am going to currently skip that small portion, come right back to it in a minute. I'm going to skip this area right here. Just go down and I'm going to look at these things. So we have the feedback option. So you can set your device to play sounds while you are writing on the screen. Okay. So again, if I bring my Samsung Notes application, okay, if I create a brand new note here, as I write, let me just tap on the pen. You're going to uh, you're going to hear it's making some writing noises. Now, the microphone may not be able to pick that up, but you can try it on your phone and you'll see it's going to make writing noises, making the whole thing feel more natural. So you can enable or disable that. If you disable this, you're actually saving some battery life, but you can keep it enabled if you want enhanced feedback. And then, and of course, you have find my S Pen feature. Basically, I'm not going to click this because it's going to give away my location. But all you do is tap on this one and it will find your S Pen. So you're not going to lose it. It's an expensive little writing tool. You don't want to use lose it. If you do lose it, boom, you can just tap with your fingers and it's going to find and locate your S Pen. And that's it. That's it for the S Pen options right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the air actions. Then we'll come back and we're going to look at the air command I just talked about. We'll talk about all these three options. So let's look at the air actions. I'm going to tap on it and the, the S Pen is currently connected to my phone. This is the S Pen Pro. It is using Bluetooth to connect to the phone and it is available with 90% battery. With the S Pen Pro, you can charge the battery with a USB Type-C port right by plugging it right here. So that's not a big deal. But we have 90% battery and basically air actions allow you to control your phone using the S Pen remotely. So let me show you one example. Uh, let's uh, look at the gallery. So choose what actions happen when you perform air actions in the apps below. So you can choose any application you want. Let's just choose the camera, tap on it. So look, the single press of a button here takes a picture or records a video. So you can remotely control your camera. You also have the gestures. So if I press the button and go up like this, as the arrow shows, that is also going to switch the camera. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to launch the camera. So right now, if I double press this button, look at this. It switched to the uh, rear camera, which you cannot see right now because it's on the table. If I double press it again, it's going to switch back here. And if I want to take a photo, I just press this button. Look. That just took a photo. The photo is right here. So that's what's happening. You can remotely control your device. So fantastic remote controlling functionalities uh, with the Air Actions. I'm going to show you guys one more example so you can use this uh, with music so you can control your music and all that stuff. So let's go down here and look at that. 
We have the gallery, we have the voice recorder. If you download the music application, it's gonna show up right here as well. But let's uh, go to the gallery app. So I'm gonna launch gallery. Look at this, I'm gonna bring up this photo. When I press it one time, it goes to the next photo. One more time, next photo, next video photo, whatever we have. If I double press it, it takes it back. Double press, takes it back. So you can even give a presentation with this thing if you have uh, those slides. But again, Air Actions allow you to control your phone as a Bluetooth only available with the S Pen Pro. If you don't want this functionality, you can just get the regular version of the S Pen Z Fold Edition, which is gonna be cheaper. But if you want to figure out what you can do with any of these support applications, you click on the app, it'll tell you what the single press of the button does, what the double press of the button does, so those are the air actions, all right? And I do wanna let you know with the air actions, at the bottom here, you have media controls. So single press, play pause music, double press, play next track, and with the gestures, you can do volume up and down and all that good stuff. Press the button, follow the gesture, that's it. And on the top, we have this option as well. So it says, hold down pen button to activate whatever you want. So look at this, I can actually do it like this. Let's choose home, okay? So now when I hold down the pen button, it's gonna go home because that's what I set it up to do right here. Or I can launch the camera or whatever I want from all these options. Launch any app that you want. Or what you can do is you can use to go back. I can also use, I can also go home by using this gesture here. So let me change this to just create a note okay or I can use any one of these gestures just press the button and follow the gesture and it's gonna do what you want it to do and all these guys are customizable so let's say you use the calculator uh, application a lot you can just choose it to launch when you press this button and go like this when you do these gestures you do not want to be close to the screen you want to be away from the screen okay if you do it here and you press the button it just brings up the air command. If I click this, it brings up the air command. You wanna be back, press, and then go like this, press and go like this. And that's gonna bring up the calculator application as you just saw. So remote control functionalities under air actions. And that's it with this menu. Now let's move on and talk about every single thing you can do with the air command here. Before I dive into all these powerful features, I wanna let you know you can add more things to the menu by clicking the plus icon and you can also tap on settings to go into the settings of the S Pen that we were just in and when I go down here's the shortcuts so if I click on shortcuts these are all the shortcuts right here that actually show up when I click this button right here okay under these shortcuts let me go back here again if I don't want something I can tap on this and remove it okay and then if I want something from here, I can just add it. As you can see, I can add a whole bunch of shortcuts. We can have maximum of 10 shortcuts right here. So I can also delete all these. Okay, let me show you what, what's going on here so you understand exactly what's happening. I can press, let's just use, say I use this application all the time, uh, calculator. So now when I go out and I press the button here, single, it brings up the air command menu that I just customized, all right? That's just fantastic. So tap on settings, go back into shortcuts. You can add whatever you want. Any application that you use a lot, you can have it right there. Now, in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add things that are powerful features. So these are the S Pen features. These are just the apps. I'm gonna show you guys all the S Pen features. So let's add the ones that I wanna show, translate, magnify, glance, write or own calendar. So these are the most important ones. I'm gonna show you how these work. These are pretty self-explanatory. You know, create a note. You click the plus sign, it just creates a note, that's it. You don't even need that here. You can have it there if you want, but it's pretty easy to guess what that is. So let's start, press on plus. Just as an example, if I click create note, it's just gonna allow me to create a note, no problem. So let's start with smart select. This is a powerful tool, when you click it, you get this little toolbar at the bottom. You can select a circle. You can select this uh, custom cutting tool, or you can get the square. 
And then you can choose any portion of the screen and take a screenshot of it. And on top of that, you can edit this with your S Pen by writing on it. Even use any pen that you want, any color, and just customize it, you know, mark it up and just send it to whoever you want. And of course, it doesn't have to be the home screen. If you're on a website, let's just go to google.com here. So it's not working, but whatever. Let's say you're on a website researching. You press the button, smart select. Let's say you want to share something with your buddy with, in a circle format. You just select that, tap on the pen icon. Okay, look at that, beautiful. Then you can save it to your gallery. That saved it to my gallery. So when I launch my gallery, that screenshot is right here the circle and my markups and I can just share this with whoever I want. So powerful little feature. Let's move on to the next thing. So press the button. We have the screen right. Now the screen right takes a screenshot of the entire screen. Tap, click, and then what it allows you to do is again edit that. So you can have your pens, pencils, whatever. You can mark it up, draw, you know, arrows, circles, whatever you want to do. Again, you can either share that from here or you can just save it. As I hover, it tells me what I can do. Save, okay? And I do have the eraser function, so I can erase all that stuff if I just want to restart. So that screen right, take a screenshot of any area. Again, you can be anywhere. I can have this guy right here, uh, press the button, and just do a screen right. That took a screenshot. Now I can start marking this thing up. Perfect, okay? Fantastic. Let's move on to the next one. So press the button live messages a fun tool tap on it uh, just allow the options while using the application is what I do normally and here is the best part so over here we have this color palette and I can do some really cool things so first let's pick a color so I'm gonna pick this color that's the background color I'm gonna say start drawing and then I'm gonna grab a pen here we have all these various pens and you can do some really cool things with it look at this just say, hi, I wrote something. Now what I can do is I can play that thing, okay? And then I can click done and save it as a video and then I can share this with somebody. So here's a share button. So this video that's playing is gonna be shared with anybody. You can do anything that you want. Click on color, pick a background, pick a pen. Okay, they got cool uh, options here. So let's say something really, look at that. Just got a heart right over here. I can send that to anybody that I want. You click on done and then you share. So that's live messages. Fantastic. And I want to let you know, you can do the same thing if you take a photo of something or you can just do it from your gallery. Okay. So, so many options to write messages and animate them. Let's move on. Next option, click the button. And we have the translate feature. This is a fantastic feature. Let's go to a website, uh, google.com. All right, here it is. I'm gonna go to news. I just need an article, okay? So let's go into this article right here. And I'm gonna go down. Actually, here we have some text. I'm gonna use this text. So if I tap on this button, and if I bring translate, first you choose translate from. So that's gonna be English. And then over here, we have this little bar, translate to, let's just say Japanese, okay? So what I can do now, I can point on words and that's gonna translate that word to the language I chose. Let's just go for something simple here, Spanish. So if I hover over that word, boom, lawyers, abogados, okay, or have, tango. I don't know Spanish, by the way, so I'm just saying it probably incorrectly. But you can choose any language to any language. And look at this. If I tap on this guy, I can select the entire paragraph. So the whole paragraph has been translated. Amazing little tool. And I can have this anywhere I want on the screen at all times. Or exit out when I'm done. Let's press the button. Let's see what else we have. We have the magnify feature. Tap on it. Now I have a magnifier. Okay. We have this little toolbar. I can choose the magnification level and I can just point and magnify. If I want to see something properly, boom, boom, magnify. X, you're done when you're done. Tap the button. Let's go to the next thing. We have the glance feature, one of my favorite features. 
whatever you have, like I was in here right now, okay? So let's say I want to use this article to write something else. I use glance. Look at this. Tap. It goes here. So I'm doing something over here. And let's say I want to glance at this article. I just bring the pen. Glance. When I go away, goes down. Glance. Goes away. Perfect. When you're done, you can grab this guy and you can just remove it from the glance feature. That's that. And then what we have is we have write or own calendar. Powerful feature. Tap it. And here's the calendar. I can actually write on the calendar. And that's going to be on the 15th. Just like you would scribble on a piece of paper or on a wall calendar. So on the 17th, I can write whatever. 16th, I can zoom in and really put some details, you know, XX, whatever. So, or just mark a calendar. I can choose a color from here. This is just incredible, okay? So you can mark up your calendar and then save it. When you go back and launch the calendar, all these changes are going to show up there. Look at that. Beautiful. And that's the Air Command, the power of Air Command. Fully customizable, like I said. You can go to Settings. Uh, you can go over to Air Command Menu and change the shortcuts. You can show the Air Command icon, which is this black icon right here. I don't like that. I'm just going to disable it. And you also have the option to open Air Command with the pen button. So this you want because when you click this, it brings it up. If you have this, then you can disable this. Now you can click this to bring up the uh, Air Command. It's all up to you. But everything is fully customizable. And that does bring us to the end of the S Pen section. Now let's dive in and talk about your battery. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks now that is going to allow you to extend your battery life on your full three. You don't have to do this, but in the process, you're going to learn a lot more about your phone. So the next 10, 20 tips are all going to be battery related. And then we'll move on to a different category. So the first simple tweak that's going to give you some marginal extension of battery is going to be if you go into sound and vibration, and if you scroll down just a little bit, and if you go to vibration intensity, what you want to do is you want to reduce the vibration intensity as much as possible, or if you don't like it, simply disable it. The lower the vibration intensity, the less battery consumption. Now, this actually could make a big difference for people that get notifications all the time. Some people get more messages, some people get less messages. If you're getting more messages, more calls, this is in fact wasting your battery because there's a little vibration motor in your phone that actually needs power to vibrate. So you can lower these, keep it at middle or something, and you're going to be good to go. All right? That's number one. Number two, you want to go to your connections. All right? And then you want to go over to Wi-Fi. And then you want to tap on this button right here and you want to go to advanced. Once you're at the advanced, you simply want to enable Wi-Fi power savings mode. So when you enable this again, you're going to save battery. Now Wi-Fi is something we use all the time. So this technique is going to be very important. So it says right here, reduce battery usage by analyzing Wi-Fi traffic patterns. And while you're here, there's a couple things here you can do also to extend that battery. These are just subtle things that extend the battery because every feature in this phone requires some battery power to be used. So if you disable these two features, detect suspicious networks. If you're in the house, you don't need this enabled because your house is not a suspicious network. If you are outside, you can enable this, but if you disable this at the house or the office, you're saving battery because it's less work on the phone. Same thing with this guy. This one here is not even that big of a deal, all right? So those are the things you can disable under Wi-Fi Advanced to get even more battery. Let's continue. And by the way, if you're wondering what case I'm using for my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, I'm gonna drop a link down below. This is the official leather case by Samsung for the Fold 3. This is the color I like, the brown color, but they have, I think, four more colors. Links will be down below in case you're, in case you're shopping for that case. The best part with this case is when the phone is unfolded, I can actually have it flat on the table. No huge wobble, nothing as I operate the phone. And of course, there's leather, so it's absolutely lovely. The next thing that's very important is the display. Now, display eats most of the battery, 
okay? So the first thing you want to decide is, do you want the motion smoothness at 120 hertz, which is adaptive, or do you want 60 hertz standard refresh rate? There's going to be a big difference in battery savings between these two. So with the standard 60 hertz, both displays on your full three are going to operate at 60 hertz. It's not going to feel as smooth, but it's not going to feel any worse than phones just from a couple years ago. So just make the modification. If you don't feel a huge difference to save battery, you can stay at 60. But if you want that motion smoothness, again, it's going to be up to you. You want to stay at, at adaptive. I'm going to stay at adaptive for this video and I'm going to tap apply. But again, the standard version is simply going to get you longer battery life, period. Now, the next thing with the display is you want to make sure you control your brightness properly. You don't need high brightness at all times. Uh, it's good to have the adaptive brightness for certain scenarios, but most of the time I disable this and I manually control my brightness. I keep it where it makes sense. The lower the screen brightness, the less battery consumption. And another huge thing under this settings, if you go to dark mode, if you are in, in light mode, because it's an OLED display, it actually wastes more battery. If you go to dark mode, what happens is the phone is able to turn off pixels on your display, so that saves you more battery. So stay in dark mode if you want even longer battery. For the sake of the video, I just, I'm just gonna stay in the light mode, but the dark mode will save you battery. Additionally, if you pinch the screen, and if you tap on your wallpaper, what you want to make sure is you want to make sure apply dark mode to wallpaper is also enabled. So when you enable dark mode, the background image also darkens a little bit. So you're getting that battery savings a little bit. The brighter the phone's display, the more battery you're wasting. Now, one more thing that's under connections that you probably never heard about. If you go to your settings and if you go into connections, you want to tap on more connection settings. Once you're here, you want to disable nearby device scanning. When you disable this, the phone again is le putting less work out, which means you're saving on battery. Now, what I recommend you do is you read this and make sure this is not something you need. It's not something I need right now, so I'm going to disable it and that's just going to extend the battery. Another huge thing is if your phone is not operating properly, it is also wasting more battery. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of techniques to make sure your phone is running at optimum performance at all times. So go to your settings and go into battery and device care. On the top here, tap on this button and go into automation. Now, once you're in automation, you want to make sure auto optimize daily is in fact enabled. Okay, disable, enable. If you click it, you get exactly what it does. So I have it set. So every day at 3 a.m., my phone just optimizes itself. You can pick any time you want. You can do p.m., a.m., 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever. Let's just do p.m. And also tap on this. That's going to close up apps to free up memory. Just by doing that, by optimizing your phone, you're making sure it takes less battery away. And also it makes your phone perform faster, okay? And then also make sure you do this. This is very important. A lot of people don't have this done. I just got this phone, so I'm setting it up as I go right now. So auto restart at least once or twice a week. Monday and Friday, I'm gonna choose, or let's just go uh, Monday and Thursday. I'm gonna choose 3 a.m. when I'm sleeping, all right? And what's gonna happen is the phone is going to auto restart Monday and Thursday, or you can do every day. If you want every day, you can do that. Just select all of them, okay? I just think two days is enough with Android. It's gonna restart at 3 a.m. every day, making sure the phone reboots, refreshes, and operates at its maximum performance, okay? So you wanna make sure that's enabled. And of course, adaptive power saving is going to allow you to extend your battery based on your usage. This is completely AI based. Artificial intelligence is going to do things in the background for you. Okay. You can have it on and off. It's up to you. The other thing you can do is while we're here, go to the battery. Okay. And this is something you just want to be aware of. At any time, if your battery is right now, it's at 80%. So no big deal. Let's say I was at 15% and I'm out there. I need that charge. 
I simply turn on the power savings mode. Once you turn this on, you'll notice that the always on display gets turned off, the CPU speed gets limited to 70%, and the brightness gets decreased by 10%, all right? And also, if I disable this, you can also do this, limit apps and home screen. And you also have this option here that's pretty cool. So if you limit apps and the home screen, now when you turn on the power savings mode, your life is gonna extend dramatically. So look, press power, boom, you're getting five days and two hours of battery life on 80% charge. The only thing is you're not getting maximum performance. This is, this is for situations where you only have a little bit of battery life left and you wanna extend as much as possible, okay? At 80%, I don't recommend turning this on, but if you have 15%, 20% left, you don't have access to a charger, you're out in the field, you can enable this and you are gonna be good to go. When you're done, tap here, it takes you to, to the regular uh, mode. Now, a few other things you can do, again, to extend your battery life is to turn off features that require extra battery. So let me show you what those are, the big ones. So the advanced features, uh, at the bottom, we have something known as video brightness. If it's at normal, you're good. If you have this at bright, that means when you are using these media players, YouTube, Netflix, the phone maximizes the brightness for better visibility and also sharpens the display. But what happens when that happens is it's getting eating more battery, period. So you wanna keep this at normal if you wanna maximize that battery life. The other thing, uh, if you go to sounds and vibration, at the bottom, you got sound quality. Uh, if you enable Dolby Atmos, again, it's taking more battery. Yes, you're getting better sound quality, but also wasting more battery. So what if you're not somebody that listens to music or watches YouTube videos all the time? You don't need this, all right? Enable as you need. You can have it right in here. It's somewhere here in Dolby Atmos. If you don't see it here, you know, tap over here, tap on edit buttons, and just grab that Dolby Atmos and right here, and keep it right here. So that means you can enable or disable it as needed, all right? Don't have it on all the time, even for simple things. So that'll save you a lot of battery because it's a, it's a feature that requires that extra battery. Now, one more thing that you wanna modify to save even more battery is, again, when you have features enabled, you're wasting battery. So go to notifications. If you have the brief enabled, go to brief pop-up and make sure edge lighting is turned off, okay? And the reason you wanna turn this off is if you have this on and you get a notification, you get these nice, nice effects. Let me just show you. Let me maximize the size here. Okay, let's change the color. So you see that when you get a text message, you get that nice effect. And of course, the bigger that effect is from here, the more battery it's gonna waste. So you can disable the edge lighting if you don't need it. Just go in here, swipe over, and go to none. And that's going to kill uh, edge lighting, saving you even more battery. Okay? Now this next feature is crucial. And every Samsung Fold 3 owner must turn this on immediately. I'm going to show you guys how to enable it and how to operate it when it is necessary to do so. Now it is a super awesome feature. You're gonna go to your settings. You're gonna scroll on just a little bit. You're gonna go to biometrics and security. Once you're here, what you wanna do is you wanna look for find my mobile, this option right here. So basically you paid a lot of money for your smartphone. And sometimes it happens we lose our smartphones. With find my mobile option enabled, you are able to locate control and track your device. So if you end up losing it, it is going to use Google Maps to tell you exactly where your phone is. Of course, it's much more than that and we are gonna be diving into the details. Now, the funny thing is a couple years ago, I lost my phone and I was able to track it using this function. The waiter in the restaurant actually stole my phone. So I was able to track it back to her car while she was doing shopping somewhere. And basically I just told her, hey, I think you got my phone. I got it tracked and she gave it back to me. So these things happen. And if they do happen, you are gonna be prepared. So the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna turn this on. Now, when you turn this on for the very first time, if you have not done so, it's gonna ask you to log in to your Samsung account. As you can see, my Samsung account is here. 
and it's going to be linked to my Find My Mobile application. So let's say you lost your device. How do you use Find My Mobile to track it? It's actually very easy. So let's say this device was lost. All you do is you go to a laptop, could be a PC, could be a Mac, you could go to a tablet, you can go to your friend's smartphone or a family member's smartphone, and you can start to track that smartphone. Let me show you how. So let's say this is not the one that got lost. Let's say my original Fold got lost, and now I'm trying to track it because it is expensive. I don't want to buy another one. So what you can do is you can go to any web browser on any device, Windows, Mac, whatever. And all you do is you type in that magic URL, which is actually listed right here. It's findmymobile.samsung.com. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to type it in, findmymobile.samsung.com. Okay, when I click go, it's going to take me to that website. It's going to ask me to log in. So I'm going to tap on sign in, and then I'm going to log in with the same Samsung account that I originally logged in to my Find My Mobile application, which is right over here. Now remember, we're assuming this phone is lost, and we're assuming we're losing using somebody else's phone to track this phone. So I put up my credentials. I'm going to tap on sign in, and it's going to dump me into that uh, interface. So once you log in, it's going to dump you into this web page right here. I'm going to blur the background a little bit because you don't, I don't want to broadcast my location everywhere. But what you do is you click this button here, okay? And that allows you to access all your devices under that Samsung account. So in this case, I'm looking for Z Fold 3. But, so I'm going to go to Z Fold 3. I'm going to tap on it. And again, I'm going to get this incredible menu right here you can see it is checking the status of the phone it tells me what's the battery level it tells me the current location has been updated on september the 6th at 8 36 which is the time right here and then i have all these options i can perform on the phone that's lost i can ring the phone so if it's in the house somewhere it's going to start ringing it's going to make a noise you're going to be able to locate it now, if I'm scared that somebody's going to go in there and get my sensitive information, I can lock the phone right from here. Okay, again, it, we're assuming my phone is lost. It's somewhere, let's say, in New York, and I'm in Pennsylvania. I can lock it from here. Or if you want to actually track the phone, you're going to click on track, and it's going to actually allow you to start the tracking process. Check where your missing phone is every 15 minutes. So when you click on track, right on the actual map, it's going to give you the exact location which you can plug in to Google Maps or whatever, Apple Maps. It's up to you. Now, if your phone is really, really includes sensitive data, you can go and you can erase the data on your phone. And before you erase it, you could actually back it up. Okay, so that's really crazy they thought about everything so back up the data because it's sensitive data that you might need later and then boom you erase it so the person that finds the phone if he can somehow unlock the phone maybe you don't have a pin number they can access your data but with this erase option everything is gone you can retrieve all the calls and messages you can unlock the phone so let's say let's say a family member found the phone you can just unlock it if you have to and then you can extend the battery life. Now, this is a crazy feature. If the phone loses its battery and dies, you can't track it. So when you first log in, you actually want to tap on extend battery life. That's going to maximize the lost phone's battery so you can track it as long as possible until you actually find it. And those are all the options you have here. Now, one thing I'm going to let you know Let's go back to the settings of the lost phone. Let's assume this is the lost phone you were setting up for the first time. You do want to make sure you enable all these options. The more options you enable, the more easy it is to find a lost phone or perform certain tasks on it. So if you want to remote unlock that phone, you have to enable this setting. You're going to have to have a pin number. Right now I don't have one. But if you want to remote unlock the phone by tapping the unlock button, you do need uh, to enable this function. Now, this is great. Uh, the phone is going to send your last known location right when the battery falls 
to a certain degree. So if I enable this, I'm going to get automatic notifications of my uh, phone's lost phone's location when the battery gets really low. So it's a last step measure. And now this is crazy. This is offline finding. Locate your phone even if it's offline and help other find their devices. So this is a network feature. If you agree, you become part of the Galaxy network. And once you become part of the Galaxy network, other people on the Galaxy network can also help you locate your phone, even if your phone was offline, as in not connected to the internet. Using the Galaxy network, using things like Bluetooth and stuff like that. So the more you enable, the easier it is to track. Now, mines are disabled right now because I haven't set this phone up as my primary just yet. But this is an absolutely crucial feature that you wanna enable because if you don't, and if you lose your phone, it's gone, and I have to pay $1,800 to buy another one. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.